YouTube, what's the deal? It's your girl Jahira, and I am back. What's going on, y'all? Um, so I had a couple of videos that were kind of, you know, in the ether in my head that I was planning on making regarding a couple of news pieces that I wanted to talk about and, and things of that nature. Um, but I wasn't sure whether or not I wanted to put them out because, um, I didn't know if I had enough to say on the subject that would really warrant a video. And I came to the conclusion that speaking from my heart today would probably be a much better use of my time than trying to speak from my head and sound eloquent and rehearsed. Today, uh, well, I guess I should say yesterday because y'all won't see this until Sunday. Um, Saturday, the 7th of June, was the day that we honored the life of Dr. Maya Angelou, and um, her memorial service took place this morning, well, Saturday morning. And I guess, you know, when I found out that she had passed away, I, I, I was devastated and awestruck at how profoundly a life can be affected by a person whom you may not personally know. Um, it, it was almost funny to me because I started thinking about, you know, the, the younger generation and sort of who motivates them, you know, Beyonce, Rihanna, things of that nature, and like, and that fervor that, that one can feel towards um, a person in the public eye. And, and it was a little bit funny to me because I, I guess that is the fervor uh, for which I um, extended and uh, aspired to in terms of Maya Angelou. I, I, I re it was amusing to me when I really started to think about it. And uh, everybody and their mother were, 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 was talking and has been talking about ever since she passed, you know, the impact of I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings and how, how deeply it affected them and, and how it's become, you know, a staple in American literature, if you will. Um, and I loved that book, don't get me wrong, I, I, I grew up on it, I appreciated it, but it was not my favorite. My favorite book of Dr. Angelo's is called Singing and Swinging and Getting Merry Like Christmas. <laughs> and it's, um, it's part of her whole, like, autobiographical series, and it was, it, it encapsulates the period of time of her in her early 20s, when she was part of the touring company of Porgy and Bess. And um, that is my favorite book. I mean, I devoured that book as a teenager because she wrote, I mean, the imagery that she concocted and the eloquence of her words describing her period of time in Paris, performing with this company and being part of this, you know, intense theatrical troupe and, 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 experiencing Europe through the eyes of, you know, a formerly mute African-American woman during a, a time where it was exceedingly difficult simply to exist in our world. You know, to, to my young self who longed to be part of something bigger than me, who longed to run away and be acknowledged and appreciated for who I was, I mean, her words spoke to me on a level that I will never be able to articulate to you. And so that was my favorite book, and still is to this day. I mean, her, her works of poetry are unparalleled. You know, I'm, I'm so disheartened. I know that everybody has their time, but it's, it's been rough. I may get a little emotional here, so just bear with me in advance. So I watched the memorial service. I, I watched as Oprah Winfrey and President Clinton and First Lady Obama lauded praises upon this woman. And, and I felt such a deep sense of loss 
But it also put me in the mindset of what does it mean to be a beacon of hope and a a compass pointing towards righteousness for so many people? What, What does that mean from the perspective of the one being it and doing it? I have a loved one, a very dear, down-to-my-roots loved one who approached me earlier tonight and said, when are you going to make another video? And I said, you know, I have a couple of ideas, but I just, I don't really know because I don't really know the direction of the channel. I, I feel like I'm sort of at this stagnant plateau and I don't really know you know where to go from here um and he said to me you know but have you thought about the people whose lives you've changed huh I said yeah have you thought about the people whose lives you've changed I mean those people your subtastics you know they they need more from you and you've got to consider that And that was a hard truth I didn't really want to have to face. Um, And I've never really considered the possibility that I've changed lives with my work, with my videos. But I promise all of this ties together. I, I, I was thinking tonight about Maya. And about, you know, the fact that when you have somebody who seems to be this, like, never-ending wellspring of wisdom and knowledge and advice and, 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 uh, I mean, lays the pathway for how life should be lived, we don't really consider the possibility that this person may have had bad days or bad times or moments where she just didn't really freaking feel like, you know... (laughs) being Yoda for the masses. Like, we we don't really consider that because we're basking in the glow of her her majesty and, and her, you know, her aura, her essence, her way of being in this world. Um, and to, to a much smaller, I mean, infinitesimal degree, I get that. I get that because a lot of, you know, I've been very blessed in my life that a lot of people tend to come to me for advice or for wisdom or nurturing or comfort or affection or attention or, you know, whatever the case may be, I've been able to be that. God has positioned me to be that for a number of people. And as of late, and again, um, emotion warning here, I have felt as though I don't have anything to give. I've honestly felt that I that the, the well has run dry, that I'm just out. I'm just out of ideas. I'm out of, you know, who saves the hero, you know? I'm, I'm just, I feel depleted. And that is why the videos have not been coming, because I, I can't give anybody what I don't have. And as of late, I just have felt like I don't have, you know, my uh, financial situation is questionable. My health has been, you know, contained, but there are issues. My living situation, I, I just feel an overall sense of discontentment with the state of my life right now. And I don't say that to say that I'm necessarily depressed, um, although it, it has, it can be very depressing, but there are just areas of my life which need a lot of work and if I can compartmentalize them then it can be handled but when it feels as though it's so like insurmountable and everything is happening at once it's easy to get overwhelmed under the weight of all that and so how can I authentically say anything to anybody when all of this stuff is kind of swirling around when when my circumstances seem so precarious and so again, it, it occurred to me tonight that, that Dr. Angelo 
must have had those moments, must have encountered those those pockets of time when you feel as though there's there's just nothing there, the, the, the what I call footprints in the sand kind of moments because you literally just can't walk on your own two feet and, and you you absolutely require a higher power to, to carry you to the next place. Um, and during the memorial service, a woman by the name of, I believe Allison, please don't get me wrong, sang God Put a Rainbow in the Clouds. Um, beautifully. I mean, beautifully. Had that happened at a storefront church rather than whatever Wake Forest has gone going on over there, like, four laps would have been run around that church. You just needed to know. Like, she sang the pants off of that song. And it did place me in a position of where I'm, I'm saying to myself that... I have I have lost sight of my own mission. The whole purpose of the mission from the beginning was was putting yourself on a higher level of priority in your own life and and allowing that to be the thing that motivates you to authentically give to everybody else. I don't want to come to a place where I have been so focused on what I'm lacking that I neglect what I already have. What I already have is you. Each Woo! As I minister to you, I'm ministering to myself. Each and every one of you shows by your own volition to, to jump on board here and see what the ride is going to be like. And I haven't even always had the answer to that. And I not for a second want you to believe that I am in any way ungrateful to you for that I am I am so exceedingly grateful to you so I have to trust that God or Allah or the universe or by whatever name you call that which is not tangible that which cannot be condensed into a sound bite um will take care, will provide all of the needs I know and even some of the ones that I don't. And um, I have to get my, my butt back in the game and continue to provide you with, with whatever I do have. And um, it's taken me this long to come to this conclusion and it really took today's service for Mother Maya, as a friend of mine calls her, to um, to to center me, to ground me, to bring me back to reality. You know, one of the one of the concerns that I've had about making videos was that you know, being outwardly trans at this point seems to be trendy. I hope I don't offend anybody when I say that, but it does. It, it seems to be trendy, and see. There's, there's a disconnect taking place. I am from an era prior to Janet Mock's uh, public presence. I am from an era prior to Laverne Cox's public presence. I am from the era of if you can go through life undisclosed, that's the goal. You've, you've reached, you've attained that which we all set out to do. I mean, you see that even those of you who have rode with me for a long time, you know, I didn't come on YouTube openly as I am. I came to YouTube disclo uh, undisclosed, or stealth, as, as we're saying now. Um, although I really hate that term. And, and it took some time, and it took a really powerful, profound experience for me to open myself up to uh, sharing that aspect of my life with you. And so there, there are those people who, who fear failure a great deal. Um, but for those of us, raise your hand if you're one of them, who've, who've known failure multiple times, it's not something that you fear. But success, the concept of success and being successful, I struggle with. You know, who will I be then if this all works out? You know, what will that mean? Will I, will I get so entrenched in my ego that I forget about 
the actuality of my soul. Um, and so I, I haven't wanted to put out like content after content after content regarding trans issues because the thing is, I am not in the least bit ashamed of the fact that my journey to womanhood has included transition. I'm not. But I live in a state, I live in a city that does not affirm or celebrate my being in that sense. You know, we, we have to remain cognizant of those who, who need to, for the sake of their own safety, remain undisclosed. And that's kind of where I am right now. And so I haven't, you know, and I'm very conscious and very aware of all the great cis women, my sisters and my friends, who, who are part of this Jahira's mission, part of the journey. And so I would never choose to exclude y'all for the sake of doing some, like, you know, grand trans-centered um, or centric or, you know, specific channel. That was never what this was about because I believe in the commonality of our experiences as women. I believe that there's so many parallels. We all know what it is to feel dogged out. We all know what it is to feel uh, underused or underappreciated or undervalued or unloved. I mean, th these are human experiences. And so, for me, it has been about finding a balance. And, and now, for me, it's about stepping up to the plate, regardless of what I may be dealing with, and, and continuing to put information out there that I, I believe is beneficial to all of us and not get so mired down in the circumstances of my own life that I neglect something which has always brought me a great deal of joy. So, I have Dr. Angelo to thank for all this. And, um, yeah, I just wanted to let y'all know. And, um, I, I hope at some point that I have been a rainbow in your clouds. Because you have certainly been one in mine. And, um, thank you, Darren, for making me do this. I appreciate you, and I appreciate all of you, and I love all of you, and um, enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I will speak to you very soon, and as always, 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 one love.